Over the weekend, the Pope came out saying that Ukraine should have the courage of the white flag, with which he didn't mean that Ukraine should give up in the war with Russia, but that the two sides, and especially Ukraine, should move forward to negotiations. Now, this made some people very angry because it is a reminder that at this point, as it was already the case for a long time, the one side that still is ruling out negotiations is actually Ukraine and the collective West. We now living, we're now living in a situation where we have a interview with the Russian president by Tucker Carlson in which the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, officially said that he is ready and willing uh, and for negotiations and that he's just waiting for the Ukrainians to come back. And this interview has been watched by hundreds of millions of people. Um, already and the, the one side that still actually officially has a as a legal roadblock in the way of negotiations is Ukraine. I mean let's remember that as we speak now this um, uh, there is a, a, um, a, a decree that Zelensky issued on the 4th of October 2022 almost one and a half years ago, right, um, which forbids him from actually uh, negotiating with Vladimir Putin and future presidents of Ukraine, right? So uh, Zelensky on the 4th of October um, made this decree that says uh, that uh, Ukraine is ready for negotiations, but with another president of Russia. So Ukraine basically dictating that um, there is no negotiations with, with Putin, none. Um, even for future president. This decree is still in effect. Um, reacting to the decree at the time, um, this little article here says, um, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Russia will continue to carry out its special military operation for as long as Zelensky blocks negotiation. Uh, Peskov added that we, Russia, will either wait for the current president Zelensky to change his position or wait for the next president to change his position in the interest of the Ukrainian people. So for one and a half years, the Russians have been saying they're willing to negotiate. Um, they need to have an opportunity to sit down with the, with the Ukrainians. And we know that uh, negotiations did take place at the very beginning in March and uh, in late February and, and March, the entirety of March 2022. Right. And these negotiations were then in the, in the end sabotaged. Uh, by the West, that uh, and and the, the the agreement, the neutrality agreement for for uh, Ukraine failed. But ever since then, it was the West that said um, we cannot negotiate. And funnily enough, the or tragically enough, for the last two years, the the narrative has been that. Uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't want to negotiate and that he's not willing and able to actually hold an, uh, an honest dialogue. Now, this narrative is so utterly ridiculous at this point that, that even the, the Holy See, the Pope, now says, uh, Ukraine, I encourage you, please please finally talk to the Russians. So the article in the, in the New York Times says that Pope Francis had, has reiterated in a new interview that Ukraine should negotiate to end the war with Russia. But this time he used language adopting his interviewer's expression, the white flag. Uh, Vatican spokesman Matteo Bruni immediately clarified that the Pope meant ceasefire and negotiations, not surrender. So um, the Pope is really not asking for, for Ukraine just to lay down its weapons, but to walk to the negotiating table. But the Pope's words and others he used during the interview have underscored how the Vatican has often bewildered Ukrainian, Ukraine's officials and supporters struggling to understand its position. <clears throat> now, what is the... Um, what is the, the, the collective West struggling to understand about the Vatican? Um, here it comes. The article says, Early in the war, many Ukrainians expressed frustration with Francis for his refusal to specifically call out Russia and its president, Vladimir uh, Putin, as the aggressor of the conflict. The Vatican had also sought to avoid taking sides in the war. So, obviously, the collective West still has problems wrapping its mind around the, the fact that the Vatican doesn't take sides and that the Vatican tries to remain neutral. And this issue, you know, that, uh, the, that a neutral actor is being portrayed as not taking the good side, this is the oldest problem, the oldest problem that neutrals have, um, like forever in international relations. Um, because as soon as a conflict is framed mentally as a 
as a battle between good and evil, between the forces of light and the forces of darkness, then there is no space anymore for neutrality, right? Because not taking the side of the of the of God and the angels and, and, and being good means that you automatically support the forces of evil, darkness, and the devil. Um, so uh, and the whole Ukraine war is being is being cast as, as such a moment, right? Therefore, uh, neutral actors then are automatically discredited in the eyes of those who think of the war as um, as good versus good versus evil and this is really this is the oldest problem and the pope has uh, tr has been trying to escape this uh, this fails dichotomy saying that there always need to be um, neutral actors um, he for instance said in that interview that I believe that the strongest is the one who sees the situation thinks of the people and has the courage of the white flag and to negotiate the Pope's words. Uh, turns out the Pope is actually a realist and not not an ideologue of the West who um, uh, who, who 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 tries to create a biblical uh, battle out of what's currently going on, which is which is quite funny actually, right? That the Pope is the realist and the the politicians in the West are the are the are the uh, <laughs> the theocratic fundamentalists. The Pope says negotiation is never a surrender. Um, so you know the funny thing is that this that this is ex expression that he used as the the white flag ruffled some feathers and really made people people uh, uneasy. Although in the interview itself he made it very very clear what he meant, um, because the discussion was apparently about the symbol of of white and white flag and they they just came to talk about this one here but the pope here has a very very realist assessment saying like we need to end this this horrible tragedy a uh, tragedy the article in the new york times continues saying that the pope has made other statements that have made ukrainian officials and supporters uneasy his habit of giving audiences to allies and officials of mr putin his blanket and his blanket condemnations of arms trade so the fact that the uh, pope says and does things that are not dogma in the West, right? Dogma is Putin is pure evil and um, weapons are the only way to peace. As the head priest of the of the Western sect, uh, the Mr. Stoltenberg said several times over, many, many times actually, you know, and the fact that the Pope dares to sacrilegiously uh, condemn this approach to say that this is wrong that that is something that uh, the the pope has been criticized for now the uh, the ukrainians have this interesting problem that they are of course also um, quite devout christians not not uh, most of them or many of them not catholics although ukraine also has a, has a catholic minority they are protestants but they they do respect the pope and hence the reply by the uh, by the ukrainians has been relatively um, soft. I mean, read. Let's read this uh, tweet here by uh, Dmitry Kuleba, the foreign minister, who on Saturday replied to the Pope. On Sunday, replied to the Pope. The strongest is the one who, in the battle between good and evil, stands on the side of good, rather than attempting to put them on the same footing and call it negotiations. Can you see this? Can you see how how very precisely he is? Uh, castigating the conflict as the as this, this this epic struggle between good and evil. This is of course then how you how you delegitimize any neutral who tries to to kind of be equidistant to the belligerents. At the same time, when it comes to the white flag, we know um, this Vatican strategy from the first half of the 20th century. I urge to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past and to support Ukraine and its people in the just struggle for their lives. He's talking here about the Vatican actually staying aloof of the First and the Second World War. And, you know, there is a, a ongoing controversy, which in my view has been settled. Um, but some people say that the Vatican in the Second World War was pro-Nazi and, and pro-genocide, pro etc., etc., and didn't help the, the Jews enough, when in fact we have a lot and a lot and a lot of evidence that the, that the Vatican did what it could, at least against the... Um, the the holocaust and actually we have uh, uh the 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 pope uh, the the pope uh, pius the the 12th was thanked for for his role and also in, in israel 
but you, you know there are there are these many many myths about uh, the the sins of not taking side in the Second World War, and the Vatican is one of those. And then Kuleba actually says, our flag is a yellow and blue one. This is the flag by which we live, die and prevail. We shall never raise any other flags. So flat out, flat out rejection of the idea of, you know, the metaphorical white flag, waving it in order to say, like, let's talk, let's let's discuss. That is just another one of these um, of these no moments. Uh, Kuleba also says, we thank His Holiness Pope Francis for his uh, constant prayers for peace and we continue to ho hope that after two years of devastating war in the heart of Europe, the pontiff will find an opportunity to pay an apostolic visit to Ukraine to support over a million Ukrainian Catholics, over five million Greek Catholics, all Christians and all Ukrainians. Well, you know, this is something that they would love, right? Another one, another world leader going to Kiev and and denouncing Russia as pure evil and and Ukraine as, as a holy, um, as fighting in a, a holy struggle against against um, Russian uh, savagery and that you know Russia needs to be defeated. Uh, but the Holy See tries to do the op uh, the opposite, which makes me very very positive. I'm not I'm not a div I'm not I used to be a Catholic. I I not the catholic anymore i am i'm i don't believe in the in the catholic church but i must say they do good things these days and they are trying at least at the moment to live up to their pacifist um uh, core principles i mean after all jesus christ was the greatest uh, pacifist hippie that probably ever lived the guy was literally willing to be nailed to a cross in order to uh, to to erase the sins of of, of of his his fellow beings right um at least that's the belief right but but he was a pacifist he was highly highly pacifist right um those without sin shall shall throw the first stone um brilliant brilliant things and the current catholic church is trying to live up to that so the holy father um pope francis also said when you see that you are defeated that things are not going well you have to have the courage to negotiate and you are ashamed of yourself for negotiating he continued adding that if, um, if instead one continued on the same path how many dead and then in the end it will be worse still turns out the Pope is a realist. The Pope n understands and knows that this war is not being won by Ukraine, and but that every day that the war continues, it's going to make the situation for Ukraine worse and worse, and it's going to kill more and more people. So what we need is negotiations instead of empty rhetoric and more weapons. And the, the Pope here pushes for this very, very strongly, for which I congratulate him from the bottom of my heart. Um, of course, again, like um, this is being cast in this good versus evil spirit. Uh, here we have a typical um, pro-Ukrainian post on Twitter um, of what, what this looks like, right? Uh, the Pope from a boat uh, yelling at a shark devouring, uh, devouring a person. I call uh, on both of you to find peace. Uh, so Russia, the shark, and the innocent little person just trying to struggle against being swallowed. Um, if this is the way that you think about the war, then of course you would think the the Pope is a lunatic and doesn't understand what's going on. But realism is this school of thought that forces you to actually look at what's happening on the battlefield and to, to understand what the political purposes uh, are behind diplomacy and behind what's going on on the battlefields, right? Um, and we know it is utterly clear at this point in time that the Russians are very, very Machiavellian and very fun, uh, Clausewitzian in their use of violence. They want to achieve something with that. Uh, and in order to, to, uh, to bring this war to an end, you need to actually engage in a form of reaching a, a, a consensus or a compromise um, in, or on the nego at the negotiating table instead, on the, uh, instead of the battlefield. Uh, because at the moment, if you do that on the battlefield for Ukraine, dear Ukraine, it's just not going well. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost so many more lives. Um, interestingly enough, in the West, it is being picked up. So there's this article here in Foreign Affairs, how to pave the way for diplomacy to end the war in Ukraine, uh, came also out uh, just about a week ago um, by two, two writers who 
have written several times about how to end the war with negotiations and they keep they emphasizing they emphasize here in foreign affairs as well that um, it, we need at least to start talking about talking right um, no negotiations yet but it's time to talk about talking so how to how to create the ground you know for uh, going coming to the point where we can have at some point an agreement um, it is time to begin to build uh, to build channels for Ukraine and its Western partners. That means talking about talking or making conflict diplomacy a key subject of bilateral and uh, multilateral interactions. And also, this article is forced to to just also just point out that um, it is Kiev that is in September 2022 refuses to negotiate with as long as uh, Vladimir Putin is the president of Russia. The article also has the great idea of uh, Kiev just saying that um, negotiations with Putin are out of the question, but you could uh, negotiating negotiate with any one of the diplomats because those people are not Putin. So there are, of course, ways forward. I mean, this decree from the side of the Ukrainians is something that can be lifted immediately with a stroke of a pen or that can be like circumvented um, by by any number of like little shenanigans and tricks in order to make it possible that, that, that these two sides can talk to each other and of course they are talking to each other they do prisoner exchange swaps right they they um we've had the grain deal and so on i mean there were negotiations and these two sides are in talks um with each other but we have still the political block on blocking on top that uh, that prevents the the big the big and important meeting to happen where the actual cessation of hostilities a ceasefire and then eventually some form of of peace agreement can be uh, can be discussed so this is what needs to be removed and that's what the pope talked about um ukraine use the white flag don't give up but go and signal that you're now willing to talk in order to get to an end of this utterly useless conflict which ukraine itself is not the, is not responsible for you know i need to emphasize russia should not have invaded this, this shouldn't have happened this is this war is a tragedy and russia um uh, carries its share it's uh, of the of guilt for this for this entire situation to happen russia is the one that that invaded but but um ukraine and the the collective west did everything they they could in order to to get to a point where russia is willing to invade so what we need is a process that leads out of this spiral of death right um, and we need to get over attributing blame to everybody and get to the point where uh, actual negotiations can happen um, bravo vatican um, it would be fantastic if this led uh, led to a rethinking of the situation um, this one alone certainly won't but um, and victoria newland is also out of the state department now so who knows maybe maybe something's moving in the toward finally a peaceful settlement. Uh -huh.